Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Ranked, where I climb the online series 2 VGC ladder in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and provide live commentary as I go. In this video, I'll be trying out the Iron Jugulus team that Marcus Thatcher used to win the Bokum Regional Championships. Iron Jugulus is a really interesting Pokemon in VGC, and it has not been very popular in this format, but it has a couple of niches going for it. First of all, it gets access to Snarl, making it really valuable against certain strategies like NDD plus Armor Rouge. It's also a flying type, so it synergizes really nicely with Great Tusk, which often wants to click Earthquake next to its partners. And third of all, with the booster energy, it is one of the best Tailwind users in the format as well. The team was initially developed by Wolf Glick, and Marcus piloted to a first place finish at that regional championship. And as always, I'll do a quick breakdown of the team, but if you want to just skip to the battles, check out the timestamps down below. Thanks so much as always for joining me. If you enjoy, I'd really appreciate it if you consider leaving a like on the video or subscribing to the channel. It really helps out a ton, and let's get into things. First of all, just some quick context about the tournament. It was a regional championship that used the Series 2 rule set towards the end of February. There were almost 600 players competing in the Masters Division. And fun fact about this tournament in particular is that it was held in the same city and venue that Marcus won the Germany National Championships in back in 2014, so almost a decade ago. Marcus, by the way, just one of the greatest players in the history of the game, multiple regional and national championship titles, and also was a semifinalist at the 2016 World Championships. And so, yeah, as you can see, Marcus ended up winning the entire tournament, and I thought it was a really good meta call, this team in particular, for this event. I think one thing that was really fun to watch was Marcus in the finals against Alex Soto, where Marcus basically showcased how good Jugulus plus Gothitelle and Golden Go can be against the Arm Rouge NED combination in particular. And so, yeah, you can check out the VODs for this tournament also down in the description below. Now, as I mentioned, this team was initially developed by Wolf Glick, and Wolf had actually finished in the top eight of the Knoxville Regional Championships on that exact weekend as well. And so, I think one of the things about this team was that, one, it was a great meta call, especially with Jugulus and Gothitelle. I think Jugulus in general is something that very few people had experience fighting against going into this tournament, or going into this weekend of tournaments, I should say. Uh, the other thing is that it just is fairly effective and simple to pilot, because there are very clear combinations and duos that you should use. And so, yeah, ultimately, the team obviously performed incredibly well over the course of this weekend, and yeah, it was really interesting to see Jugulus, you know, kind of pop up and rise up all the way to the top, and, uh, you know, listed a couple of reasons why it was good in the beginning of the video, but let's quickly break down the team. First of all, there's a team report written for this team on Victory Road, so I figured it'd be easier to go through the team report and talk about specific team building decisions and EV spreads rather than break it down on Showdown, which I normally do. Report is linked down in the description below, as well as a rental and a paste if you want to try out the team yourself. Now, the first Pokemon to highlight here is Iron Jugulus, and as I mentioned in the introduction, this Pokemon is valued for a couple of reasons, including being a great Tailwind user, having a lot of nice bulk, and getting access to Snarl plus Air Slash. The general idea behind Jugulus, of course, is to try to set up Tailwind for its partners. Really good next to Golden Go, really nice next to the Great Tusk as well. I think one point that Marcus mentions here is that's really important is that Jugulus is really bulky, especially with Snarl with access to protect, and so you can often set up multiple Tailwinds, especially if the Jugulus stays on the field for the entire time. So keep that in mind as you use this Pokemon. Also keep in mind that you have very little special attack, right? And so you're not actually often going to do that much damage, but the value of a Pokemon like Iron Jugulus is not to get knockouts, it's really to disrupt your opponent with Snarl, and then Air Slash can also, uh, you know, deal decent damage into a fair amount of the format while also fishing for flinches, since it does have a really good uh, flinch chance, right? So defensively here, you can see that Moonblast from Fluttermane, even if you don't Terra, is only 6.3% chance to KO. Uh, Wild Charge from Hands here is a roll that's more in your favor. Golden Go is the next Pokemon to talk about here, and one of the main things about Golden Go is that it is just super good next to Iron Jugulus, right? You can just Tailwind and click Make It Rain immediately, and so this Golden Go has a ton of bulk, right? 244 HP, 36 defense, 4 special defense, and the speed here, as you can see, allows you to outrun Choice Scarf Tatsugiri when you have the Tailwind up, right? And so the general idea is to just do a lot of damage while also being able to survive a good amount of attacks. Trick is one thing that I think makes this Golden Go really strong, and Marcus utilized that perfectly in the finals of the tournament that he won. It can be really valuable against Trick Room oriented teams where you can lock them in with Gothitelle, Trick onto the Trick Room user, and then just put them into a really uh, tough position overall, which is cool. And then Steel Terra here is mainly good just offensively while also getting rid of some of your weaknesses. Great Tusk here is a fairly straightforward set. This is a uh, ground terror with life orb, so it's really meant to just maximize your damage. One of the main things with Tusk is that you want to often lead this with either the bundle or the Jugulus, and you have a lot of immediate pressure. And so, yeah, fairly straightforward here. 
one thing to call out is as 28 HP EVs rather than max HP EVs to kind of maximize the uh, life orb damage calcs ultimately. And so, yeah, it's one of those like very specific hyper optimizations that you can do in Pokemon. And it's one of those things that like maybe makes a difference in one out of, you know, every so matches, but it's always interesting to kind of, you know, see how much you can optimize Pokemon in sets in particular. So, yeah. Bundle is the next Pokemon to talk about here. This is a Focus Sash set rather than Booster Energy, since Booster Energy is already committed on the Iron Jugulus, and you've got the Icy Wind, Encore, Freeze, and Protect set. I think Encore Iron Bundle is just one of the best sets in this format. I ran it at the Vancouver Regional Championships, and I think it straight up won me three or four sets that I feel like I would have lost otherwise. I think Encore Bundle just has a lot of utility, specifically into Dondozo teams, but into a lot of matchups in general. It can often lock your opponent, where it's like if they basically mess up one turn and you like switch an Iron Bundle as they don't expect it, it puts that Pokemon into a really tough spot in the subsequent turn. I think the cool thing to note here is that it has Flying Terra, right? And so it synergizes a little bit better with the Great Tusk as well, meaning that you can go Bundle plus Tusk as a lead, Jugulus plus Tusk as a lead, uh, and you can you know safely Earthquake if you Flying Terra Bundle, for example, which is really nice. But I think Encore is just an incredible move on this Pokemon. Gothitelle is the next Pokemon, and I think the main thing to call out here is that it gives a really valuable Trick Room mode. Now, this team is relatively fast, right? But Gothitelle plus Iron Hands is an incredible two Pokemon duo, because you just do so much damage with the hands, and you also have sustainability with Drain Punch on the hands, as well as the Leftovers plus Protect set on Gothitelle. I think the main thing that makes this Gothitelle unique was the combination of Leftovers plus Charm. Charm is really valuable in shutting down a lot of physical attackers in the format, whether it be Dondozo or Dragonite, for example. So the general idea behind Charm is that you can really make those physical Pokemon very, very useless very quickly. This team also has Snarl on it, so the combination of Snarl and Charm can very much just overwhelm your opponent very quickly and essentially make one Pokemon slot very, very useless. And so, yeah, Steel Terra here is mainly defensively, especially against something like uh, Golden Go. And you can see here, even Modest Life or Fluttermane with Shadow Ball uh, is very minimal chance to get that one hit knockout onto Gothitelle. Finally, we've got Iron Hands. This allows for just general good fake out utility and uh, offense, right? Overall, so uh, it's just a really strong Pokemon and synergizes really nicely with Gothitelle in particular. One of the main things to note about Hands is that it is just a Pokemon that can do a lot of damage, but you also have Drain Punch and Close Combat, which I think before this team had really been used, what didn't really see too much usage. So. The idea is that you don't want to make it super slow because there is Tailwind on the team. So you can see here, um, speed stat of 70 allows you to outspeed Admin Great Tusk and Tailwind. Also valuable against Dondozo, for example, which is pretty cool. And so, yeah, Close Combat just provides a lot of utility while Drain Punch is valuable and, you know, healing back up, especially against Pokemon like King Gambit and Tyranitar. So I think you can take a look at the article for ways to generally utilize the team and kind of different game plans. I won't really walk into the specifics, but I think the main thing to note about this team is that you have three clear duos in hands plus Gothitelle, the Jugulus plus like Golden Go, as well as the Bundle plus the Tusk. So it's like three very strong oppressive lead combinations that you can all consider. And I think in the majority of games, I remember when talking to Wolf about this team, he was like, I, I very much think about the team in terms of those combinations. So take a look at the report and see, you know, what leads are recommended. But yeah, Iron Jugulus plus the Tusk or Iron Jugulus plus Golden Go, really strong. Goth and Iron Hands, really valuable. Um, but there's so many different ways to kind of utilize the team. And so in terms of weaknesses, the article actually lists a couple of really key ones, and I think, you know, it's interesting because a lot of these Pokemon have surged in popularity recently. So Dragonite, King Gambit, Lilligant, Torkoal, Arcanine, and Volcarona can all be fairly difficult for the team to go up against, and obviously, you know, everything has potential counterplay, and so, you know, there are uh, options to go up against all these Pokemon. One thing to note in particular, though, is that Wolf got eliminated by the Lilligant Torkoal team that finished top four at Knoxville Regionals and just won Vancouver Regionals. So if you are using this team, know that at the moment, you're actually going to be fairly weak against one of the most popular meta teams. And so that's actually one reason why what's really interesting is, like, this Lilligant Torkoal team... No one really knew about it until uh, Nick, you know, Nails ended up piloting at Knoxville Regionals. But then after Vancouver Regionals, now a ton of players are using the team, right? And so it's interesting to show how even though like this team won a tournament, the meta shifts very quickly. And even just one team being really popular can make it more difficult to win. That being said, if you're playing like on ladder, even in a tournament, right, your odds of running into like this little Gantorkel team in particular are not exactly that high until you get maybe like later on in the tournament for example so that doesn't mean that you should discount using this team right yes it is fairly weak into one of the more popular teams at the moment but there are there's so much team diversity at the time uh, moment at, as well in the format um and i think this team is honestly just one of the most like 
straightforward and strong teams that you can utilize because you're relying mainly just on a lot of pure offense. That's not to say that it's like necessarily easy to just play with the team immediately um, because I think Jugulus in particular is a Pokemon that's not as intuitive to use because it doesn't actually really deal that much damage. That being said, you just have a lot of pure strength and the, you know, the goal is often to just overwhelm your opponent with offense before they can really move. So yeah. Anyway, that's it for the breakdown. Please go check out this article. It'll give you more insight than I could really ever. And then go check out, you know, Marcus's VODs and battles as well. I think that'll also give you a good insight into how to play with the team. So, yeah, let's get into the battles. Okay, what a cool team here. Frostmoth with the Bomb of Snow and Iron Bundle. Moth, Valiant, and Iron Hands. That's fascinating. Joggy looks, looks pretty strong here, right? I think another approach could be Got the Tail and Hands under Trick Room. But I, I feel like Snarl is honestly really good as well as Air Slash here. So I'm down for Jugulus. I think Jugulus Tusk works here, honestly. And in the back. Golden Go feels decent. Especially with the number of Ice types. I have to respect Wide Guard and stuff, though. And then Hands is the fourth, I think. Okay, let's try it out. I think we have a lot of early offense, but I feel like both the Iron Moth and the Valiant here, I'm not exactly sure what the sets are going to look like. I think Valiant in general is just a pretty interesting Pokemon. Special sets have popped up a little bit more recently as well, which I think is cool. So it's going to be Hands and Frost Moth. So they have Fake Out Tailwind Pressure potentially. Katera here. Honestly, Frostbolt is kind of a wild card. I think I'm down to click Tailwind here and then protect with the Tusk. I just don't want to faint to like Fake Out plus an Ice-type attack onto that slot. We'll see where the Fake Out actually goes, though. Okay, does go into Tusk, nice. I just wanted to make sure I got Tailwind up on turn one, because I don't want Frostmoth setting up in front of me with no consequence. Infestation? Whoa. Okay. That is super interesting. Um... I could see this going for Terra Grass. And then like just wild charging into Jugulus. I don't know what to expect from Frostmoth at all, honestly, is the thing. I'm actually thinking about going for Steel Terror on this. But then I guess I'm weak to close combat, right? I'm honestly going to try to just eliminate Frostmoth here because I just don't know what it really wants to do. Yeah, they go for Wide Guard, okay. Man, Wide Guard and then not Terra with hands is really risky though because if I just gone for Headlong Rush onto that slot, would have put them in a really bad spot. Also, it took Air Slash so well. That was a critical hit and it took less than 50. But we'll finish it off with Life Orb Close Combat. I assume that would KO without the crit on Air Slash, but I honestly do not know my Frostmoth damage calcs at all. Thunder Punch, interesting. Yeah, because of that, instead of Wild Charge, I actually survive. But of course, it means they don't take recoil damage. Okay. And it's gonna be a Bomb of Snow coming out. Well, can't help but wonder if they have um, Ice Shard. Got Golden Go and Hands in the back from my end. I don't know what their last one would be, but I would think it'd be one of the Paradox Mons. Personally, I'd like to just Air Slash here. Ground Terra and Earthquake. I'm going for Terra here because I don't think I have like that much value out of Terraing what I have in the back at this point. I don't think Grass Hands really changes anything, and I think it's worse into a lot of what my opponent would have in the back, in like Bundle and Moth. 
It'd be somewhat valuable against Iron Valiant, I guess, but I think Ground Terror here just allows me to potentially threaten, like, hands with the Life Orb Earthquake, but I would expect Hands of Terror here. I was really surprised they didn't Terror last turn, though. Thought that was quite risky. If it's Grass. Oh, Flying Terra Hands! Okay. I have not actually really seen that that much, but that's a very good counter into... Tusk, and this is a perfect turn for them. Yeah, protect a snow and deal a lot of damage, if not a KO, into something. Wow, Flying Terra is really bad for me. That's like the worst Terra we could have run into. Very cool. Okay, they're just going to Thunder Punch the KO Jugulus, though, which is fine by me. I could consider going for Trick with Golden Go onto the hands. The thing about flying, though, I guess, is now it makes you weak to my hands with Wild Charge, which is pretty strong. So, I'm going to just bring out Specs Golden Go here. <laughs> I wonder if they have Terra Blast with hands. That'd be so interesting. Um, they don't really have a switch in to make it rain plus close combat, right? on that slot. So, I'm down to just go for that. Okay, no protect, no switch. There's close combat. The defense boost from Snow is quite nice for my opponent, but that's fine. Mainly curious if hands can KO Tusk from the range that I'm at. Rocky Helmet, Obama Snow. The, the game just gets wilder and wilder. Wow. Looks like Assault Vest on hands to me. Wild Charge will be able to finish that off, which is important. Uh, they actually Thunder Punch Golden Go. Okay, nice. Works for me. Tailwind Peter's out. Now, it's very interesting. What is your last one? Is it Moth? That's probably the best one for them to have. It's Bundle. Okay. Uh, I'm fine going in a Bundle here. I think it's kind of hard for it to match up against everything, and I think my late game hands is looking pretty strong right now. Down to click Make It Rain here. I mean, Tusk really doesn't provide us that much value at this point in the game, right? Like, I don't think protecting actually helps us because we want the free switching into hands a little bit sooner right now. So. I'll click close combat onto hands in case bundle protects. They just go for hydro though, okay. Nice, we survive. Uh, although, that... Probably meant targeting Bundle there would have just been an immediate win. I think it's still fine, though. Because, uh, I don't think Make It Rain gets the KO, but that's fine. Yeah, it's like, oh, it actually just KOs Bundle. Nice. Yeah, I thought Moth as their last one could have been the scariest. And they end up Drain Punching Tusk, but now I get the free switch into my Iron Hands, I can just Wild Charge them. So, yeah, like... Jugulus was nice in this one because they put on Tailwind Pressure, had a super effective Air Slash into the Frostmoth as well. I, I just really didn't know what to expect from Frostmoth. This team in general is pretty wild, right? Like, Infestation Frostmoth, Rocky Helmet, Obama Snow, Flying Terra, Hands with Thunder Punch. A lot of surprises among those. But now we can just click Make It Rain and Fake Out. I think ultimately what saved us in, in this game was uh, the amount of bulk like Golden Go had, right? It was able to survive multiple Thunder Punches plus a Hydro Pump. And uh, get multiple make it rains off, which is so, so crucial with this Pokemon. So, yeah. Um, but the main thing about Jugulus is that I felt like it had a really good matchup into a lot of my opponent's Pokemon, especially with Snarl Pressure. And that made it harder for my opponent to, like, get that much value out of, like, Obama Snow or Frostmoth, for example. And even though Jugulus ultimately, like, maybe didn't get that Snarl off or Air Slash off into Obama Snow, for example, um, it put on enough pressure where it essentially forced that slot to protect. And that's always valuable for us as well. But, yeah. I mean, one of the main things about Jugulus is just it's an excellent Tailwind user that's also fairly bulky and puts on offensive pressure, uh, especially with the combo of Air Slash and Snarl. Now, it's not that much damage, but it's enough damage to scare your opponent often. But really interesting team for my opponent there. I've never seen Infestation Frostmoth in this format before. Whoa, man, the teams today are really interesting. Broxish, which I honestly didn't even know was in the game. <laughs> Skeletor, Duranguru, Brute Bonnet, Sylveon, Hands. I hope Bruxish comes out, because I have no idea what to expect from it. Um, 
So this feels like a Trick Room oriented team, right? And against Trick Room, Golden Go with Trick is really interesting because we can essentially lock them in with Gothitelle and then Trick Choice Specs onto the Trick Room user. So I think I like Gothitelle plus Golden Go as the lead. Don't think we bring Bundle here. Hands is decently consistent. I kind of want Jugulus plus Tusk in the back. I think the correct choice is probably Hands over Jugulus here, but I also think Jugulus is interesting thanks to the combination of Snarl plus Air Slash. Uh, hands is a little bit more consistent because of its bulk and its damage output, but... I think um, Jugulus can do some interesting things, especially if we trap them into a bad spot. Skeletors plus Sylveon. Okay. Uh, with this, I would expect Sylveon to protect your Terra turn one. And then them to just go for like a fire type attack onto the Jugulus slot. Or sorry, the Golden Ghost slot. Uh, I do have this Choice Specs Power Gem from Golden Go, which I think is pretty interesting in a Skeledurge. I guess the thing is, who Terra's here, right? Sylveon doesn't scare me as much. Okay, I would love to KO Skeledurge here, so I'm going to Psychic and Shadow Ball it. So here's a Terra. I think Protect Sylveon, Terra Skeledurge is probably their safest play overall. But it's Sylveon Terra, which I'm okay with. Ground Terra. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Okay, Skeletor doesn't protect, so I'm already happy to see that. Twist back Shadow Ball into that slot. Enough for a one-hit knockout. Nice job, Golden Go. That's already a really big deal. It's gonna be Ground Terra, Terra Blast. Very cool. Probably one-shots us, right? Oh, nice. The bulk pays off. Golden Go's been so clutch. So this is what's interesting, right? Part of the reason why I thought Jugulus would be an interesting bring is because now, like, once Golden Go goes down, I can bring out Jugulus, Steel Terra, Snarl, and essentially make the Sylveon very sad. Bruxish comes out. Okay. Now that's really the wild card here. I know nothing about this Pokemon. I mean, I'm honestly down to just protect Gothitelle here and just Shadow Ball into Bruxish. If they eliminate Bruxish, then uh, Jugulus comes out, and I can just steal Terra Snarl. It doesn't protect though, okay. Ooh, Focus Ash? Focus Ash Bruxish! <laughs> that was really cool. That was very cool. So it's probably Trick Rooming here, right? I could have doubled up onto that slot, that may have been slightly more optimal, but it's fine. Um, I think what I'm going to do now is just bring out Jugulus, Steel Terra, Snarl, and Reverse Trick Room with Gothitelle this next turn. Yeah. And with them being Ground Terra, Terra Blast... Oh, I guess, yeah, we're not Levitate. They could make the crazy read of going for Steel Terra, like Terra Blast on the Jugulus. So it's probably slightly more optimal to protect Jugulus here. Reverse Trick Room. My only question is whether or not they could knock out Gothitelle with a double up from this combo right now, because I still don't really know what to expect from Bruxish. I think it's slightly more optimal to reverse Trick Room and Protect here. And the good thing is we've trapped our opponent in, right? So it's like, we at least they, they can't go for any switches to catch me off guard. Yeah, so there's Hyper Voice. Okay, God takes that pretty well. Wave Crash! You know, it's funny because I feel like I still don't really know the full set of Pokemon that gets Wave Crash. Like, I'm just used to seeing it from Palafin. But now we've reversed Trick Room, which is really nice. And it is time to go for Terra with Jugulus. This is exactly why I brought it. I think, like, Jugulus, Gothitelle can feel a little passive, but the combination of Snarl and Charm can be really nasty. Um, I'm just going to click Psychic here on a Bruxish in case I miss the Snarl so that they don't get to set up Trick Room for free again. And just Snarl. 
I'm very curious about the item on Sylveon. It wasn't Throat Spray. It's not Life Orb or Specs. Or, like, Leftovers. I'm honestly not really sure what to expect. But either way, like, you know, if Brox is Stotion Protect here, we just get the KO immediately onto that slot. Sylveon's at minus one immediately. We don't miss, which is perfect. And the Hyper Voice here will do pretty minimal damage. So, while they can Terra Blast us, like... If we don't miss the next Snarl, they'll be at minus two special attack before they even get to hit us. And they just look hyper voice again. Perfect. This is one of the things about Leftover Scothatol, by the way. It can actually really solo a lot of end games. Um, because, like, you're often, once you get these charms and snarls off in a position where you can actually overwhelm your opponent a decent amount, where, like, they just can't really deal any damage to you and you slowly heal back up between Protect um, and Leftover's healing. Okay, so Hands is the last Pokemon. Obviously, that has Fake Out Pressure. But Tusk is my final one, which is obviously incredible into both of these. And so, yeah, we're looking pretty good. Charm is really valuable here. So I'm going to Charm into Iron Hands. That'll essentially just shut it down immediately. And I'll click another Snarl here. Like, Hands can fake out one of the two Pokemon. But if you fake out into the Jugulus, that means that I just get you to minus two attack immediately onto Hands, right? And so Tusk is pretty much the perfect Pokemon to clean up this game. Um, they're not going to protect with either or fake out, but that's fine. Sylveon now is at minus two special attack. Hyper Voice here. Ooh, it does get the crit onto Gothitelle, making things a little more interesting. Okay. That's fine, though. It's still not even enough to get the KO, and now the hands is also at minus two attack. Right, so, like, the damage output from these Pokemon just really aren't... Ooh. <laughs> uh, okay, it's Belly Drum. That's really cool. That's a nice way to get around Charm, that's for sure. It's fine, though. I think at this point, like, Life Orb Earthquake should kind of just clear things, right? Uh, the idea is that we made Sylveon relatively ineffective. They can't Terra with Iron Hands here, either. Sylveon should be in KO range from a Life Orb BQ. Drain Punch is the only thing to be worried about from this thing. I'm happy to just Psychic into this. Oh, no, we'll actually outpace them. Hmm. How long Rush should get the KO later on, though, right? If I were my opponent, I would Dream Punch Jugulus here. Um, so you know what? I think the best play is actually to just Psychic into Hands. Yeah, and just Protect Jugulus here. Because all we have to make sure is like they just don't get like a massive amount of recovery off, right? And Hyper Voice should just KO Gothitelle here. So now it's a free switch in into the Life Orb Tusk. And with Life Orb Tusk, I can just go for Headlong Rush. Oh, unless Gothitelle survives. Okay. Uh, that survival is actually a little awkward. I mean, I think it's still fine. Um, but yeah, I wanted to go down there. Or, like, like if I didn't get crit earlier, then I would probably survive another Hyper Voice and Psychic just finishes off hands, right? Because I'm not sure Air Slash actually gets the knockout onto either slot right now. Um, like, the order will be Jugulus attacks first. Not sure Air Slash KOs either Pokemon here. Iron Hands then tar targets Jugulus. I'm sorry, it'll go... Jugulus first, Sylveon, Hyper Voice, Iron Hands, Jugulus. Uh, I'm okay going for Protect plus Air Slash here, I think. Because I still think um, my Great Tusk should just win the game, even with all the recovery from hands. Maybe Air Slash just KOs here? Oh. Well, that was a crit. I'm not sure. Like, or yeah, I'm not sure we'd get that knockout without the crit. But it was fine, right? Because it's like, even with Drain Punch healing us all the way back there, Sylveon's at minus two special attack. I get a free switch into Tusk. Um, and I can just click Headlong Rush. Belly Drum was cool, though. That was actually like the only set that could have saved my opponent, I think, in this end game. If it were Swords Dance for typical Assault Vest, both of those would have went down. But yeah, since we had Tusk in the back anyway, and with both of my opponent's Pokemon being so low, I felt like we were in really good shape. But it's interesting, you know, I wasn't sure about whether or not I should have brought Jugulus out into this matchup. And in the end, it was actually really good, right? Like, being able to Snarl Sylveon twice and get it down to minus two special attack was really valuable. The Air Slash to finish off the hands was quite nice. I am very curious about that damage calc, just because it's not Assault Vest hands. I'm so used to Assault Vest hands damage calcs. 
But I was thinking maybe we'd get the knockout. The other upside of Air Slash is that, like, yeah, a crit or a flinch or just maybe a high damage roll there all would potentially allow us to KO the hands. Depends on the hands EB spread. Um, but, yeah, like, Air Slash's value is nice because you do actually have um, a really good chance of flinching as well. So that would have just sealed up the game immediately. Um, but, yeah. I think the reality is with Life Orb Tusk in the back and a Sylveon at minus two special attack, um, you know, we are fairly well positioned there. So, yeah. But... Things would have been easier for me if my Gothita actually went down to that Hyper Voice because then I would have just gotten the free switch into Tusk and could very easily just click like Headlong Rush plus uh, Air Slash, for example. But yeah, um, I you know, I actually do want to do one quick damage cut because I'm curious how much minus two Sylveon does into Great Tusk. I actually don't know that off the top of my head. So minus two special attack Hyper Voice from max special attack Sylveon does 57.5 to 69% onto the Great Tusk. If Great Tusk is at minus one from a headlong rush, though, then it is a 31.3% chance to one-hit KO. I think one thing that I was thinking about is, let's say, let the, you know, Iron Hand survives just with a sliver of HP, drain punches into the Jugulus for a KO and knocks me out. Then I bring out the Tusk. With Tusk, do I feel confident clicking Earthquake, for example, instead of clicking the uh, headlong rush? Because, uh, you know, obviously the hands will be able to heal back a significant amount. And so we can take a look here, right? If it's Iron Hands, um, Earthquake here, Life Orb against uh, 108 HP 76 defense does like 61 to 72%. So I would have had to kind of make a judgment call if, you know, the Jugulus ended up fainting and I brought out Tusk, whether or not I was, was confident um, that, yeah, the hands would still be in KO range from this damage calc, basically. Another thing I was curious about was the Air Slash, specifically from Jugulus into Iron Hands. So if it's like 84 HP, 252 Special Defense, which is one of the EV spreads that's in this damage calc, um, then we do 21 to 25%, and it looked like the hands was just around 25%. So I would guess that I would need a damage roll that's in my favor uh, most of the time, I think, to actually get that knockout, or a crit or a flinch, right? any of those work in my favor but if they're not like that specially defensive invested then the, it, like kind of for for every less amount of like hp or special defense investment then the role obviously works a little bit more in my favor but i think given that the sylveon then up not KOing the gothitelle which i should have thought about a little bit more like i was just confident would ko because i think the crit the turn before threw me off what would have been better for me was actually just air slash and psychic into the uh hand slot right because we survived there then psychic should just definitely finish off the iron hands and so that was something else to consider i felt like i just yeah made the assumption it would get the knockout but at minus two it actually clearly wasn't doing very much damage and i could have been able to estimate the amount of damage previously uh given that we had seen those damage rolls beforehand so yeah either way though the belly drum uh, definitely was a little bit scary and i'm curious uh how the endgame would have played out if you know that crit didn't happen if we didn't flinch them for example um but yeah i should have thought a little bit harder about just clicking your slash and psychic double up onto hands there i just thought the uh, gothic would definitely faint from hyper voice and then a jugulus plus the uh, tusk end game is just super strong for me at that point so yeah all right, what do we got here? What are these teams today? They're so cool. What? In terms of Pokemon we fought against, Frostmoth, Bruxish, and now there's a Alamomola in my opponent's team? Huh? Does, I, does that get Aqua Jet? Like, what? I haven't seen that Pokemon since I think I tried it once for an online tournament in X and Y. And if any of you were viewers of this YouTube channel from when I first started it, you may remember I actually did some battles with it in one of the, like, international challenges. Uh, I have no idea what it does, though, anymore. Like, when I used it, I think it had Heal Pulse, which I thought was kind of cool. Uh, I also really don't know how Colossals are eevee Like, does it outspeed Jugulus, for example? Because if not, we could just, like, Tailwind. Um... Also, is Colossal special or physical? That was the other question. Hmm. I'm not gonna lie. I honestly don't know what to really do. <laughs> like, this feels a little bit weird, but I'm actually thinking Jugulus got the tell, which is not intuitively, like, a core that you generally go with as much. Yeah, it feels a little weird to not bring Golden Go, but I don't know. It's obviously quite weak to Colossal's fire type attacks and the Moth on the opposing side as well. I think if I set up Trick Room, though, Golden Go could be really good with just Steel Terra Make It Rain. Anyway, the reason I'm going with Jugulus plus Gothitelle is because it gives, gives me flexibility, right? Like, I could go the fast route or the Trick Room route. The thing is, they don't really synergize super well with each other. Okay, it's going to be Moth and Flutter, actually. Huh. 
Just do Energy Moth, which is fine. I mean, against this, I'm honestly okay taking the Tailwind route. Ah, such an interesting position to be in. If I were them, I would aggressively target down Got to Tell. So I'm thinking Tailwind here. Psychic into you to break a potential Sash. And then we can use Tusk as cleanup. They're going to go for a Terra. Okay. Onto Mop. Flying? Ghost. Okay. That makes sense. Um, if you're wondering why Ghost, it helps them avoid Fake Out. Acid Spray onto Jugulus makes sense, but I'm curious if they doubled up on... Like, did they just go for Gleam? Because if I went Dark Terra, then I would have put them in a really bad spot. It's Moonblast, okay. I'm okay with that outcome, I think, all things considered. Was it Life Orb? No Life Orb. Uh, pretty free switching into Tusk now. Honestly, with Tusk and Tailwind up right now, I think I'm down to Earthquake. I don't know how much that does into Moth. And so I'm thinking Earthquake and Psychic here. I know it feels weird to target myself, but I you know, wouldn't expect it to KO Gotha Tell. And I'm thinking Life Orb Earthquake in itself doesn't get the knockout. Okay, they switch out Flutter, which is fine. That thing gets wide guard, I just realized as well, right? I'm pretty sure. This was such an interesting game because, yeah, if I went uh, Steel Terra turn one, they would have been in really bad shape, and then I could have just start clicking Snarl afterwards. Okay, Mothins are protecting. I'm okay with that because I don't think Ola Momola really puts on any offensive pressure against me. Maybe those are famous last words, though. Um. I think the next turn becomes really interesting. That thing is such a tank. What? That took less than 50%. Oh my gosh. I don't know. I'm like worried about... No, we should just one... I would think we one shot with Headlong Rush though, right? I'm down to Headlong Rush and then switch out into hands right now. I'm a slowly getting worried though about like a late game uh, Flutter main sweep at this point with Trick Room slowly expiring. Ideally, they try to like wide guard here this turn. Yeah, nice. I just didn't know what other attacks is going to use against me. This game also could have played out in a very different manner if, yeah, I just played turn one in a different way. But I thought for my opponent's POV, you should be more scared about Trick Room than the Tailwind pressure. Or just the Jugulus in general. It's interesting how much respect they show to Jugulus. I guess part of what they were thinking is, hey, even if I steal Terra, you can just go for a Fire-type attack against me the following turn, which would be fair. Makes sense to bring out their final mon right now, or you could bring out Flutter and then just protect it. I'm curious if all of Mamola has protect. Is that Colossal? <laughs> so sick. Man, this is so interesting. We know it's leftover, so we don't have to worry about something wild like Covert Cloak. Now, the play I want to make is doubling up onto this. With Headlong Rush and just Fake Out right now. Yeah, I don't think Colossal is that scary. Nice. 
like, the, the idea behind this play is I think Colossal almost always has to protect here, and I think all of Momola carrying protect actually seems fairly unlikely to me. I just hope we get the knockout, but I don't know. Earthquake did, like, just under 50, and Headlong Rush is so much stronger than that. Okay, perfect. So now you can't just activate Colossal. Man, I cannot believe the Pokemon we've gone up against today, though. I fought a Frostmoth, a Bruxish, and an Alamomola. And all of them actually got moves off, too. It's not like I just KO'd them before they could attack, right? <laughs> Flutter comes out. I think here... Hands plus Gothitelle should beat Colossal. And I could see... Is it any chance it's Choice Specs Flutter main? So that could be a problem for hands, right? I went for Wild Charge and Headlong Rush. Okay, they just go for Gleam, that's fine. Is it fine? Like, what's Colossal gonna click here? If it's physical, Colossal with Earthquake. That's my one fear. Okay, it's Earth Power. Wait, but Earth Power is a problem there too, right? I, it was probably correct to just switch Tusk out into Gothitelle, but I was really worried that it was Specs Flutter and then they would Moonblast to just KO hands. Uh, This is gonna be really close. Because, like, Cole honestly doesn't do that much to Gothitelle with Leftovers. I think you have to hit... You have to click Earth Power here. If you click Heat Wave, um, I'll just survive. So, I'm going to click Trick Room here and just go for Close Combat. Actually, Dream Punch is better. No, Close Combat probably just KOs. Oh. That was a massive mistake, I think, from their end. They let me set up Trick Room. The reason they went for that, though, is because they probably respected Fake Out, which is totally fair. This is where, by the way, like... Having information on your opponent's team, especially if it's a public team, gives you a huge edge. Because if, you know, um, my opponent had seen this team before, then they would be able to know, like, Gothitelle likely doesn't have Fake Out. Uh, the only thing I'm worried about now is... Close Combat doesn't one-shot Colossal. Is that re would that really be the case? Like, Close Combat's so powerful here. I'm not even sure a plus two Heat Wave KOs. But basically, my logic in thinking is if I click Drain Punch here, a plus two Heat Wave definitely should not KO Iron Hands. I'll go for Close Combat. Okay, it was enough for a one hit KO. Cool. I just, I mean, I, I can't say I've ever had hands into Colossal. You know, I, th I think the other thing about playing against Colossal is after playing Sword and Shield for so long, I'm so used to Colossal. Uh, they also have all of Momola on their trainer card, I just noticed. That's so cool. I'm so used to Dynamax Colossal, so I feel like my damage calcs against Colossal are already so skewed, and then I've never actually had an Iron Hands against a Colossal situation in this uh, game at all. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> We've definitely been... In interesting positions today, where we've gone up against Pokemon with complete wild card, complete wild card Pokemon. But fundamentally, I think one of the key strengths of using a team like this, and the team that I brought to Vancouver Regionals had, you know, just some of the strongest base stat Pokemon, is that you give yourself an advantage because you just have a lot of pure base stats to work with, right? And so when you're up against these kind of wild card Pokemon, you at least know fundamentally you're using some of the strongest Pokemon in the game and can kind of like brute force your way through it. But I think in that game, one of the decisions that would have guaranteed me the game would have been just switching um, Tusk out into um, Gothitelle. But essentially what I was worried about was the situation where Flutter main is Specs and Moonblast just one-shots Iron Hands as I make that switch. And then, yeah, the Tusk will just faint the subsequent turn. Um, yeah, I think the main thing was not really anticipating Colossal and just, like, I didn't know if it was physical or special. Now, throughout uh, Sword and Shield, it was almost always special, but... Uh, physical is something that I've actually seen a lot more in this format since you can't Dynamax with the Colossal. So, yeah. Um, 
I was also curious, like, if we ended up in a Gothitelle versus a Colossal 1v1 endgame, how that would have played out. Because realistically, I think if Colossal didn't protect in that position, they had to Earth Power to KO the um, hands. Maybe Heat Wave, but I didn't actually think Heat Wave would get the knockout. So you knock out the hands, but then Gothitelle's just under 50%. It sets up Trick Room, and then I can protect, heal back from leftovers, Psychic, protect, Psychic, protect, Trick Room, Psychic, you know, basically cycle through those. And the reality is that Colossal just, like, doesn't really do that much damage without the uh, weakness policy boost, right? It's only base 80 special attack. So I figured Gothitelle could actually 1v1 Colossal anyway, but yeah, that was a really interesting match. Especially because my opponent aggressively targeted down Jugulus so early on. Man, the interesting Pokemon just continue. We've got Belly Boat Houndstone in this one with Corviknight, Gastrodon, Brute Bonnet, and Armor Rouge. So, so cool. Okay. So, I've, I actually featured Houndstone in this format for a video on the channel if you want to see me try it out. I actually think it's pretty underrated in the format overall. Um, it's really interesting as a utility Pokemon early with Snarl will o -Wisp, but then it's a incredible late game sweeper with last respects. I mean, I guess what's fascinating is there's Houndstone, but there's no Tyranitar or any way to set up sand on the opposing side. At Belly Bolt, I actually had to beat in order to make top 8 at Vancouver Regionals. It's something that David Kotesh, who's one of the most creative team builders in the game, uh, used at a European Regionals and got, I think, top 32 in with. It's interesting because essentially it's a tank, especially with Assault Vest, it can survive for a really long time and it can also heal back up thanks to Parabolic Charge. Especially with the Flying Terra. Flying Terra AV... Uh, Belly Bolt's actually a nightmare for us, isn't it? Huh. I think Jugulus is good with Snarl. Man, I'm thinking about hands? That's the lead. You know what? I like Jogulus Tusk. Hands Golden Go. Uh, I actually think, like, I haven't brought Bondo out at all today. I think this was a decent matchup for it, because I think Freeze Dry is really good. It's good in a Gastro. It's good in a Brute Bonnet. Encore is really good in a Corviknight. Mm. Yeah. I just don't really know. Like, I actually think Belly Bolt's a major problem for us here. And it has already hit the field. Now, uh, if I had to guess, it's Flying Terra Belly Bolt. I think you're, like, my opponent is super weak to the combination of Booster Energy Attack. Okay. I think the best play on turn one here is honestly to just double protect. Um... I want to bait out a potential Protect from the opposing side and a potential Terror from Belly Bolt. The play I thought about making, though, was aggressively targeting down the uh, Brute Bonnet. But there is a world in which maybe Belly Bolt's not Assault Vest, it protects. I uh, end up, like, close combating into Brute Bonnet, but Brute Bonnet goes for a Terra and then spores me. Or just Bullet Seeds me. Don't love that. The reality is that this lead matchup favors me very heavily, but one good defensive Terra can completely swing the battle and put me in a much worse spot. Especially if it's like Flying Terra, Belly Bolt with Terra Blast, right? That obviously wouldn't be ideal. Mm, so, yeah. The idea is turn one, double protect to see what Terra is, because I think something has to Terra here, and that is going to be the case. I think my opponent also could have considered a double protect on their side, but yeah, it's Belly going for a Terra. Okay, Grass Terra. Uh, I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, Air Slash is now super effective into it, at least. I'm hoping Brute Bonnet protects here because then next turn I can just close combat Brute Bonnet and then Snarl, and then we're really gonna be in good shape, I think. I feel like Brute Bonnet should protect here personally. Trailblaze. I'm gonna be honest, <laughs> I've never seen that move in this game. Uh, okay. It's going to be Snarl in close combat here. Good switch. See, that that was the downside in double protecting turn one, right? I think, like, it felt like Belly Bolt had to Terra there. Oh, that was... Yeah, that was a great play by my opponent. And I missed Snarl and Belly Bolt. Oh, that is really not ideal. Great play. Ha! <laughs> Grass Terra Terra Blast. That is so cool. 
I wonder if Tusk could have survived if I had hit the Snarl, but I don't know. It's Defenses aren't really that great anyway to begin with, but this is definitely a little unfortunate. It's fine, though. It's fine. Uh... I think we go into Golden Go. You know, the thing about bringing out Golden Go here is I can trick onto Belly Bowl, which is actually very compelling. The problem is then it gives Houndstone the opportunity to attack. I think the better play, honestly... Ugh, I also don't know how fast Houndstone is relative to me, huh? Houndstone's such a wild card here as well. Man, missing that Snarl just put me in a pretty weird spot. Okay, I'm gonna go Snarl, Steel Terra, make it rain. Steel Terra means that... I mean, it depends on Houndstone's moveset. I just really don't know what to expect right now. But yeah, turn one, if I just click Close Combat immediately, uh, plus Snarl would have been better for me. Uh, I was willing to bait out the Terra, seeing Grass helped. Um... That's actually totally okay because I ended up clicking Snarl plus Make It Rain. Uh, looks like AV Belly to me. Does activate Electromorphosis though. Oh, that was so much damage with Make It Rain. What? Maybe it's not AV then? I'm not sure. I'm honestly not sure. Huh. Okay. Thunderbolt. Does that KO us? It does. Uh, it crits us. I, I don't know that damage calc. If, like, they're at minus one, but they had Electromorphosis activated. I don't know. But that, that crit does make it a lot harder, because I think without the crit, I should be in a very good position to win, because then I can just Air Slash into Belly Bolt, switch gold, and go out to reset that special attack drop. Now I'm going to keep dropping my own special attack, which obviously is not ideal. This is a game where it's like the element of surprise is just so huge. I'm going up against like attack, trailblaze, bonnet. Oh gosh, we actually with Gastrodon in the back. I'm not sure I can do this. I mean, hands close combat's still pretty good into it. I have to fake out Gastro here and just make it rain this turn. Gastro protects, makes sense. Oh man, yeah, I I, I want to do the damage calc with Belly Bolt against Jugulus after this game, because I'm so curious. Soccer Punch, okay, makes sense. Uh, I would think Earth Power KOs me, but I'm not sure. The problem is, like, like yeah, I'm at minus two special attack with this. Golden Go. If I had Bundle over um, Hands, I actually think I probably would have won this, right? Because then I would have just been able to bring it out and click Freeze Dry. Um, and then if they protect Gastro, I can just Encore it. And how fast is Brute Bond is my other question here. Because I want to go Drain Punch plus Make It Rain onto that slot, I think. Okay, no Protects. Here's make it rain. Minus two. Should still do a hefty amount. That's not bad. Ah, they are faster though. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's not really surprising, but... Actually, does the hands on this team have any investment? I don't even remember. We're faster than Gastron though, which is good to confirm. Your power probably KOs us. Oh, we do survive on 10. Okay. It's gonna be pretty close, honestly, because like the thing is, I can sustain with Iron Hands with Drain Punch. I think though, I need to wake up sooner than later in this one, so I'm gonna Drain Punch and then make it rain again. The nice thing is actually getting a bunch of Make It Rains off with Golden Go, but this is the problem of being like choice locked this late in the game, right? Crunch, that's fine. If we wake up here, I actually would say it's very in my favor. It's 
Iron Hand stays asleep though, okay. That's a lot of damage. Uh, I think I have to just Drain Punch Bonnet. They're probably loaded dice, but let's see though, right? Oh no, sorry, they're not loaded dice. Yeah, hold on. Yeah, you have um, booster energy, which is interesting. Okay, Crunch is their best attack. Ah, but we stay asleep again. Okay. Yeah, that's going to be game over, I think. I think I'll wake up there because, yeah, I survived that as well. But I guess I'm not sure close combat would have KO'd Gastron anyway. Like, we would have healed just the minimal amount from Drain Punch, so... Would have come down to maybe, like, a CC crit because the Gastro's been able to heal back. So what went wrong for me in this game? It, it was mainly um turn one. Like, I, I was thinking about just close combating Bonnet. Like, I think my opponent played a little aggressively because I think they totally could have um, protected Brute Bonnet there. Um, but then the turn two switch out was amazing. I got no value out of my Great Tusk. And if I eliminated Bonnet early, this game would have been so much easier for me. Crunch comes out. And then, yeah, we obviously got crit onto the Jugulus, and I do really want to do that damage cost. Because if I had Jugulus against Gastro or Bonnet in this endgame, it would have been amazing. But I, I, I have no idea what that damage cost looks like at all, so let's pull it up. Anyway, um, yeah, really interesting set of battles today. Like, we went up against a lot of unfamiliar Pokemon and sets, and like... Against Belly Bowl, I only have experience fighting against Flying, or sorry, yeah, Flying Terra as well. So Grass Terra was like a new wild card uh, for me as well. But let's uh, let's see how much Belly Bolt does with that Thunderbolt into Jugulus. This damage count gets nuts. Thunderbolt does 98.5 to 116% from minus one special attack, max special attack Belly Bolt with the Electromorphosis activated, which is an 81.3% chance to get that one hit KO. What's interesting is if I had hit that earlier Snarl, then this would have been at minus two, and then so Jugulus actually always survives. But obviously, one, I missed that initial Snarl, and two, we create so that it wasn't even a potential damage roll. So yeah, it was actually still very heavily in my opponent's favor. And ultimately, I think I could have just played that game a lot better. Like, turn one... Turn one, I'm willing to play a little bit safer, I think, because they did end up having Terror Blast, right? So another play that I think is logical for my opponent's end was Protect Brute Bonnet and then Terror Blast into the Great Tusk slot, and that, that would have been a disaster for me. So I didn't mind protecting on turn one. Turn two is where things fell apart a little bit, where they got that free switch in into the um, Houndstone. That could have been an opportunity for me to actually like double up onto Labelli Bolt with like Air Slash plus Close Combat, for example, and uh, you know try to potentially get the knockout onto that immediately. I'm not sure that actually would have KO'd, but it was you know that's some food for thought. Or just like Earthquake plus Air Slash into the Brute Bonnet slot to cover for the switch out. Right. The, the reality is I had a really good lead advantage, but wasn't able to really execute that very far. Uh, I lost Tusk for absolutely nothing in that game um we did get a little lucky unlucky missing the snarl getting crit and then the max sleep on hands as well but to be honest i still think i you know just got outplayed in a fair amount of those turns especially with the houndstone switch in uh, i think that turn in particular just made me lose a lot of momentum and then there's the debate that i could have actually brought out bundle as the final pokemon instead of hands in this one bundle would have been able to just freeze dry the gastrodon for a one hit ko would have been able to freeze dry into the brute bonnet as well and so i think that ultimately actually would have been a little bit stronger for me um especially because i didn't have too many good gastrodon answers in the late game um and the other thing is yeah the turn let, you know i let the belly bolt just thunderbolt the iron jugulus could have potentially consider playing a little bit more more defensively there so yeah belly bolt's a pokemon that honestly can put in a ton of work and i think what's tough is in this one close team sheet not knowing like what terra type it is flying versus grass or any other terra types for example um but yeah i think they did a really good job neutralizing great tusk with it early on and that put me in a much worse position afterwards so nicely done by my opponent Anyway, that's going to be it for this one. So thanks so much as always for watching. Glad to have brought out Jugulus into pretty much all the battles. And I thought we taught, fought some really interesting teams throughout the course of this one. So yeah, really appreciate you all as always for watching. Leave a like if you enjoy and I'll see you all next time. All right, peace.